Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I will create a shadow box and the inspiration came from this uh, die set. This is a C6 die designed by Tim Holtz. I will create something about coffee, but you can easily adjust the idea and make it all about tea. Now for my shadow box I will be working in this wooden panel. There are wooden panels in the market in different sizes and with different uh, lips on the frame. So this one I got from Amazon I believe and I'm going to show you another one which is also 8x8 which is by Arteza and this you can see the frame is thicker. I will leave uh, to both of them links down below if you want to grab something and I will be working on the smaller one today since I don't want to have too much dimension and I don't need all that width on the bottom. Now for today I'm going to play with resin and the idea is to create a lovely frame for uh, the wooden panel and for that I decided to work with this silicone mat. This is called Regal Trimmings and it gives you lovely uh, designs all over that you can uh, repeat again and again to create lovely frames for your mixed media projects. Uh, this is a mold from a previous release, I think it's from last year but it's one of those molds that are very versatile because you can use them again and again on different types of projects. The idea is to create the same border four times so that I can place it all around the frame. For that I will be using resin and I'm going with Alumilite resin which cures in just 10 minutes. This is a two parts resin and you will see the whole process today. There are other ways to work on the mold, for example you can use paper clay, you can use your glue gun and uh, melt silicone inside those uh, molds or you can even use clear resin which is also a two-part resin but it takes a whole day to cure. So for today I'm going with uh, this uh, quick cure resin and all you need are two cups. These come in the set along with the two bottles. These are reusable. You can use them again and again to mix your resin and uh, also you will need some uh, sticks so that you can mix the product nicely. These are included in the kit as well. Now before I start let's talk a little bit about safety because this is really important here. We are playing with chemicals so I'm definitely going to wear my gloves and I don't have any allergies but this doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you are safe and you don't touch resin with your bare skin. Also, the weather is beautiful today, that's why I chose to do this today, so that I can have all the windows open on my craft room. Just make sure that you are working on a good ventilated area. Now I'm going for this border here, which I find it is the wider and it's going to cover up completely the frame on my panel. And I also have a few other molds here. Since I am sure that I won't be measuring uh, perfectly, I will have some excess of that resin. I don't want that to be wasted, so I'm going to use a couple of extra molds and I do have an idea of creating something with those stars so I can always um, pre-make some of them to have on hand as well as some gears that I can always use again and again. So I am going to show you now how it works. You can use a scale if you want to be super precise. I'm not, I'm just going to eyeball it. This resin, the fast cure one, is quite uh, forgiving. So I'm just going to eyeball and make sure that I have both those liquids the same, pretty much the same. This resin doesn't smell at all, so you won't feel uncomfortable, but just to make sure that you have the windows open. Once I'm happy with the amount on both those uh, little cups, I'm going to pour one inside the other. Then I'm going to grab my wooden stick and I will start mixing the two products together. Once you start stirring, you will see that it becomes milky and once it is ready, it's going to become clear again. So you can see it's clear now, so it is ready to be poured. Now, if you pour directly from this cup, you may have drippage all over the place. One of my tips for pouring is to use the wooden stick and pour through that. This is going to make sure that the resin goes only where it should be without having any drippage here and there. Just use this tip, it really makes a difference, so that you don't waste any product and at the same time you don't make a mess. Now for demonstration reasons I did mix more resin that I actually need, so I'm going to pour in another border here. And I'm sure I will be working with that in another project. 
And also I'm going to bring in some uh, smaller areas, like the star for example. I'm going to pour a little bit there and then with a stick I'm going to help the product to go all the way to the tips. Now I did a very clean pouring here, so I don't have any mess anywhere, but um, in case you do have something going outside, you can always go and scrape the surface with your wooden stick. And you can see here how the resin starts to cure. It becomes white and if you touch it underneath, you will find that it is warm. I'm going to leave it for uh, 10 minutes and it's going to be completely ready. You will find that the areas that have more resin are going to turn white quicker, while the areas that are thinner will need more time to cure. I will also make a video showing you all the other methods to work with these molds, including paper clay or silicone or the hot glue gun, and I will share the pros and cons of each method. Now I'm going to try and unmold the stars first and uh, although they are white, they didn't turn very hard yet, so they are pliable and this means that you are able to give them a curve if you wish so. However, I want them to be completely flat, so I'm going to leave them aside to harden. I'm going to also unmold the second star and uh, the fact that the mold is silicone gives you the possibility to unmold those super quickly and easily. And now let's unmold the borders. These are not super hardened yet and you can let them harden for uh, a couple of minutes but I want them to be pliable because I want to demonstrate something for you so I'm going to pull out one of the borders I'm doing that very carefully, making sure that I bend the mold instead of the actual uh, border. And now you can uh, turn it around the bottle if you wish, so you can see how pliable it is. But once it stops curing, it's going to become stiffer and stiffer until it is completely hardened. I'm going to pull out the second border, which is the one that I'm going to work with. If you have some overpouring on the edges and they are not super clean, you can always use your scissors to clean them up. Now is the time because it is super easy to do that since it is so pliable. You can also use your craft knife like I'm going to do to create metered corners. While this is still pliable, it is uh, easy to cut them out just like butter. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side and I will repeat the same process three more times so that I can have four in total of those borders which I'm going to stick down. So while one border is curing, I am sticking down the other ones that I already have. I'm using ultra thick gel medium for that. You can use any type of glue that you want. I'm going to apply a generous amount with my spatula and place it down. And of course I will repeat the same steps for all four sides until I have my frame ready to go. It is a fun process that I did on one day of the week, so I had my frame ready for my project the next day. And now I'm using thick black gesso and I will go all around the frame with that. And I will make sure that I cover up the edges, the inside edges, as well as the resin. And now let's start creating the actual project for this frame. I did measure the inside and it is slightly smaller than the 8x8. And I'm going to use this pattern paper. This is from the Etcetera collection. It is an older collection by Tim Holtz. And I decided to go with this pattern paper from there, which I'm going to cut down to size, making sure that it's going to fit inside that frame. I'm using my deckled edge paper trimmer so that I have a lovely and interesting edge there. But if you don't have such a trimmer, you can always use your regular trimmer and go all around the edges with your scissors. I did spray a little bit of uh, speckled egg with my Distress Oxide spray on my glass mat and then I did press that paper on top of that. I don't want to have too much water on the paper. Remember this is just a patent paper, it's not watercolor paper, so it won't work with uh, water too well. However, I do want to have uh, that uh, bluish element back there along with a few splashes here and there. 
Now this is going to be a page about coffee and I knew I had this uh, coffee stain uh, stencil in my stash. This is again a very old stencil and I'm going over it with Distress Ink and that's Vintage Photo, one of my favorite colors of Distress Ink of all times. I'm going to use the stencil three times in different areas making sure that I rotate it and I will create kind of a triangle here. There are also some splashes which I'm going to use. I'm not using the whole stencil as it is, I'm just choosing different areas that I can work with on different parts of the page. So it doesn't look identical. I'm also going to ink up the edges. Again, that's vintage photo. Since I went with a pattern paper for the background, it does have some uh, interesting elements back there. However, I cannot stay away from stamping, so in this case I'm just using a text stamp that I had um, for a long, long time. I think this is also from the Etc. collection, from one of uh, Tim's uh, stamps. And I'm stamping with black archival ink mainly around the edges. As a finishing touch for my background, I'm going to uh, add a little bit of a vintage photo, but in a form of splashes. So I did um, smooth that ink pad on my glass mat, added a lot of water, and now I'm adding the splashes with a brush. One more thing that I like to do on my vintage looking projects is to work a little bit with the, the edges. So on some of the edges I'm using my tweezers and just curling them up. I'm also going to create some slits with my scissors and then curl up the paper as well. I think it adds a really beautiful touch on a vintage project. And you can see that it fits nicely inside my frame. And now it's finally time to grab the dies, die cut them and put them together so that I can have my focal points. So for the focal points I'm going with both cups, both the plastic one as well as the little cup. And these dies are from the Colorize collection by Sizzix and Tim Holtz, which means that you cut out all the pieces from different colored cardstock and when you place them together you have all the shading and the highlighting that brings the image to life. At the back of all these dies, it tells you a suggestion on uh, which colors you need to cut them out. However, I went mainly with vanilla, craft cardstock, as well as a touch of red for both my cups. So here you see I have all the pieces together. On some of the pieces I do um, ink up the edges with vintage photo and then I'm going to glue everything down. In this video I'm not going to go into detail on how you can put these cups together. They are really self-explanatory, all you have to do is to look at the packaging and just decide the colors that you want to play with. There is also a video available in uh, the Sizzix YouTube channel on how you can put these colorized uh, uh, images together. So here are my two cups ready to go, just mainly with craft, vanilla and red cardstock and now I want to create one of those projects where you create kind of a cluster. A great way to add texture and some dimension on your projects is to use corrugated cardstock. I did cut a piece of it and I did cover it up completely with my black gesso. Black is the color that I have on the frame and I think it is nice to bring that black on my project somehow where I have the cluster area. This is also going to provide an area for my cups to sit on top so they don't look like they are floating on my project. I will use my scissors to cut off the excess and this is a texture area by Tim Holtz that is self-adhesive, however you can use just a piece of cardstock from any box that you have at home. Now I want to introduce somehow this burlap, but I don't want it to lay flat directly on top of the corrugated area, so I'm going to use the leftover piece to lift it up a little bit so it does have more dimension. So I'm going to stick that there, you won't be able to see that, it works just as a foam tape. And then I will use a piece of double sided tape on top of that so that I can peel it off and stick that burlap on top of that. You won't be able to see the double sided tape through the burlap. 
And now let's create the cluster. As I place the caps on top, I feel like I need something at the background to help them pop even more. That's why I will use this piece. This is from the ephemera pack. So it's just a piece of a map that I'm going to create a pocket out of. I will be able to tuck inside that pocket different elements and ephemera to make my project more interesting. For that I'm using a circle at the top and I did try to eyeball it so that I have it at the center. I'm going to secure it down with a washi tape and run it through my die cutting machine. And I think it looks more like a pocket now where you can slide things in and out. I'm also going to ink up the edges with vintage photos so that this element has the same touch and feel as the rest of the elements on my project. Now I definitely don't have everything planned on my mind from the beginning, I just play as I go. So here I did uh, place that at the back and I didn't like uh, the way it was so empty and I wanted to introduce something extra like a red detail just like the red detail that I have on the cups, that's why I did stick on top an extra ephemera piece. And because I like to repeat techniques on all the elements on a project, it kind of brings everything together. I did also some stamping with my black archival ink. Now at this point I was thinking that I want to have uh, some uh, different ephemera inside that pocket. So I'm going to grab my foam tape and this way I will stick two pieces on each side of the pocket. This is going to give more room inside the pocket and I will be able to insert elements easily inside and out. Also, I'm not going to add the foam tape all the way to the bottom. I really don't care what happens down there. After all, I'm going to tuck that behind the cups. So you can see here my pocket goes in place. And again, on top of that, I'm going to place the cups. Now I will use some foam tape on, at the back of that to help them be leveled uh, along with the base. And uh, I'm also going to add some uh, thick paste at the bottom. This is gel medium, thick gel medium, so that it grabs nicely where that corrugated cardstock is and that um, burlap. Now about the steam, I did use the die to cut it out many times from the same vanilla cardstock and uh, I did stack one on top of the other. This way I ended up having a steam that looks more like a chipboard, nice and thick. Now for the inside of my pocket I was thinking to use some words that kind of um, describe all the things that you want to do throughout the day. So today you want to dream, you want to laugh, you want to create, you want to love, to dream, to travel and you can use as many of those words as you wish. I decided to use these flashcards. This is a packet by Tim Holtz that I had for ages. And um, I don't think if it is still available. If it is, I'm going to link it down below. If it isn't, you can always print out let, uh, words like this and use them on your project. You can just stick them inside that pocket like that. Or like I'm going to do here, after inking up all the edges, I'm going to use my cropadile to create a hole through all those cards and then use one of those rings to keep them together. I like this because it's going to add a metal element on my project, after all it is mixed media, and at the same time it adds extra dimension. So this pocket actually includes my to-do list of beautiful things that I want to do throughout the day. And I will use a tiny alphabet stamp that I have in my stash to stamp to do on top of the pocket. And again, I don't have everything planned from the beginning. I just have the general idea when I'm starting a project. So here I had another idea. And this is where I'm going to embellish this to-do list even more. I am going to use some phrases from this sticker booklet, with, uh, which is full of quotes. And I'm going to pair them with the flashcards. So you would have be awesome today, best day ever on the flashcard that says love. All you need is love on the flashcard that says love. For create, I went with do what you love, love what you do, and so on. I did use an alphabet die. This is by Waffle Flower, the retro one. And um, I did cut out the letters that spell out the word coffee. So I'm going to stick them down. These are quite bigger than the actual space, but I'm going to play with them a little bit, stick them up and down, so they are going to fit nicely exactly where I want them to go. 
Every day when I wake up, before I do the wonderful things that I have to do for the day, I just have to drink a cup of coffee. And that's where the whole idea came for this project. So you see, I created a pocket with all the wonderful things that I want to live throughout the day. But first, coffee. And I just used my laser printer to print out that phrase. Now, if you remember, we did create that beautiful frame, but uh, you don't really see that. So let's help that and bring all that detail more to the foreground. For that, I'm using a wax paste. This is the old silver one by Prima. I am applying just a little bit with my finger all over the place. I'm not going to completely cover it up. I don't want that to be super vibrant and super shiny. So very lightly, I'm going over and you can see how it brings everything to life. I will also use the wax on the sides. It's going to bring that wood grain into life too, that we have uh, completely covered with the gesso. Remember that this is a wax-based product, so it does have some smell. I don't mind, I actually like this smell. If you feel that it is quite overwhelming, there are other products in the market, that, like Nuvo, for example, Nuvo Mousse, that you can use instead. And that was the project for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. I absolutely love it. It's going to decorate my craft room and probably my kitchen. I'm not sure yet. And I like going through that uh, little uh, list of wonderful things that I would wish to happen throughout the day after I drink my coffee. So I hope that you had fun and that you got inspired on this week's Mixed Media Tuesday. You will find a list down below on everything I used. Don't forget to like the video as well as leave me a comment, it really helps. And also subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you had fun watching, share it with your friends. Thank you all so much for visiting today and I'll see you all next time.